everybody, this is Nia Boaz Fowler, and I'm here with the weekly astrological message for the week between March 28th and April 4th. I love saying it, April. Thank you for coming, April. I'm so glad you're here. April is here. And with that, we are stepping out of the mercurial shadow. Things are moving faster. And in two weeks, we're going to feel much, much, much better. Much better. I can see an end to this storm we are in. But these two weeks are still very stormy. And these are not the regular storms we are talking about. This is the great conjunction between Jupiter and Pluto that we're heading into at the end of this week, the beginning of the next week. And they are not standing alone, they are standing in a square to Aries, the goddess of mischief. And they've listened to a beautiful podcast by Stephen Forrest, the amazing, the great, the wonderful Stephen Forrest, which I admire, this guy. Wish he could be my father or grandpa. Or personal teacher you know like if, the, if, the, if there's a castle somewhere I need to go out and sit by not eat for a week and until he accepts me as an, his, his apprentice that's the guy so he was talking about how this conjunction doesn't stand alone but it stands squaring Aries the goddess of mischief and discord and that this is all a part of it and furthermore, Pallas Athena, the asteroid that symbolizes the goddess that Athens is named over, the goddess of strategy and wisdom and correct conduct, that is also associated, and by the way, I want to attribute what I'm saying now to the wonderful Stephanie Johnson that wrote beautiful descriptions of Pallas Athena back in 2016 in Solar Fire. And it was just so apt, you know. I was reading it before I was recording earlier this morning. And I said, God, this is so apt and so to the point to what we are dealing with today. And in fact, I want to share it with you. So here is what Stephanie Johnson and the Solar Fire team, team has wrote about Pallas Athena in conjunctions. Um in conjunctions back in 2016 so it's in a great conjunction right now with Jupiter and Pluto palace represents the wisdom seeker and the intellectual pursuits and perhaps handicrafts like Uranus it has a bearing of a wake-up call sudden changes and shocks it rules higher understanding of things and processes, however challenging they may be, difficult and demanding of change in one's life. Change that is required and change that has to be gained. Palladian energy can be quite violent and disruptive. Palladian energy. I'm, I'm, I'm attributing the great paladins of the past, the, the knights that went out to the world to not only seek justice, but actually they were also the judges and the executioners of justice, of harsh and swift justice, wherever they met injustice. So it has a very swift, sudden, and relentless a ruthless kind of strike this is not a soft blow that palace brings with it making things hard to endure as they need to get in order to catalyze necessary action and alternation in this light, palace by transit can point times of great stress, particularly if the person affected is resistant change. Palace is also one of the symbols 
of the mind and prospers on intellectual acumen and cultivation of intelligence. Palace people tend to be smart and fast, quick on the uptake, and that's what is demanded by all of us, and quick in action. Although negative or unskillful, well, that's, that's another, that's the negative side of palace, that we could see more negative and unskillful expressions of palace that show us the stupidity or the clumsiness of some people or regimes or people in power. And then they get cut off and alienated. That, that energy assists to cut them off and alienate them. And it gives strength to quirkiness and unorthodox manners of doing things. And it has a great sense of humor. <laughs> uh, often satirists uh, with, uh, uh, you know, black humor have a strong uh, palace because it talks about injustice, you know. And it has a clever, smart way of bringing it up and, and laughing in the face of adversity. And my computer is not responding. So strategy is needed. Strategy is needed right now. And especially when it touches Capricorn, Pluto, and Jupiter. It talks about the need to change our political system. To change our governmental system. To change our educational system. To change the way we think and process strength and power. And to revolutionize our structure of society, our laws, the way we form civilization. And you. Oh, yeah, what a time. So let's talk about how this week falls in. So on the 28th, Saturday, we have Venus, the planet of satisfaction, uh, trining Jupiter, the planet of expansion, just beautiful energies in the sky. Even though we're home, it's a great day to drink a bottle of wine, have some fruit, sit and talk with some over some people in an Aquarian New Age manner over Zoom, over the net, over one of the social services. You know, just be with the friends and enjoy the fact that we are alive, we are breathing, we are eating, we are drinking, that the world is renewing, that April is here, that that this world is is continuing on its cycle and Gaia is, is given a chance to breathe right now as we all you know um, enclose ourselves in our houses and in ourselves what a beautiful quietness descends over this world that we've longed for for so long and life goes on. An amendment takes place. Remember that new moon we've had in Virgo. Um, so that's how the week starts. And then we have the Mars. Uh, uh, on, on Sunday we have Mars trining the moon. And, and uh, Saturn trining the moon. And Venus joining Pluto. It's a day with a lot more energy. The sun sextiling the moon. The moon is in Gemini. It's already a much higher beat of energy. It requires much more activeness in your home or wherever you are. If you can go outside, it's a beautiful thing. If you can be intimate, it's a beautiful thing. If you can keep on doing things to correct your life, to reshape your life to reimagine your life to put things straight in your life to move forward in your life in a processed manner in a rejuvenating manner do it this is not the time to lay quiet this is the time to <coughs> and this is the time to let yourself go through a process of rebirth be that phoenix let yourself be born anew from this time 
and that means that we are incubating right now but there's a lot of processes that are happening in this incubator and we need to um, we need to go on planting seeds right now and the seeds we will plant especially as this week progresses are very very important for the future and when you look back at this time you would be happy with everything you've managed to change before things a got worse and b got better so and especially as they got worse you would you you decided to do that change to look for an inner authority to look to, to your to your own shadows in the eye to your own demons in the eye to be brave you tell me i'm brave presenting myself like this be brave yourself we all need to be brave right now we all need to choose light and love right now because if we won't create a world in our image it would be created in the image of dystopia of a regime that injects fear and control to the people and makes them more cheaply what side do you stand on personal rights and autonomy or stronger authoritarian governance how do you want to educate your children? How would you like society to be structured? How tolerant and emancipative you want it to be? New rules, Saturn and Aquarius. Monday already is even a higher beat than Sunday. And it's already a bit uncomfortable. It's not the greatest day for communication. Mars is stepping into Aquarius. So our movement forward and, and our actions and our needs for satisfaction through what we actually long for and, and lust for and desire. We, we, we get a shorter fuse. It's harder for us to wait for things and it is it's a cerebral effect we understood how we need to go forward we wouldn't want to wait anymore and that's an effect that makes us have a shorter fuse and we we don't like to necessarily wait for others lacking behind so on the good side the positive side our actions become more radical and we're able to move forward and actually disattach from the past emancipate ourselves and this would grow stronger as mars would be squaring uranus next week when we have the super moon libra same day and we can see more rebellious behavior we can see intolerance and we can see it on a social level as well we can see people going out to the streets we can see people protesting. We can see people rebelling. We can see the mind unleashed and action unleashed with it. And I ask all of us to be more tolerant at this time and respect people and projects that are already in our lives and really um, separate the, the, the baby from the bathwater before we throw everything out. Um, Saturn is also conjuncting Saturn as it moves into Aquarius and and that's a that's a that's a conjunction that says wait a minute you know before you jump ahead it's not time yet it's not time yet to open the blockade to rush forward to re-engage we need to wait and if you do rush forward right now, both in your personal lives and, and in the greater scheme of things, we could rush into accidents and mistakes. So that requires a time of 
exhalation and a pause again <clears throat> and that combined with the energy I talked about before brings a lot of frustration because we want to move forward and we can't and Wednesday has that same energy not a good day for communication a um, bit emotional too emotional on a moody manner Thursday however is nice really nice um, could be overindulgent nice but uh, Thursday night Eastern European time Thursday night and uh, Friday morning are more combative and, and demanding so lay off and just you know ego matters put aside Friday night however is wonderful and Venus is stepping into Gemini she's going to be in Gemini for a long time and this is the time to put everything relating to your satisfaction from the material world, interaction with, with others, relationships, money, assets, into our cerebral cortex to think about things and actually network ourselves in new ways, update, go with the times, learn new information that enables us to move forward in ways that we haven't moved in before. And understand that right now it's not about one thing, it's about being a jack of many trades. I can gain value this way and I can gain value that way. I can pull up that card when this is needed, that card when this is needed. Okay, it's a bit about knowing to, to um, quickly change hats, you know, and maybe um, have a few sources of income and, 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 and learn a few things and teach a few things and, and you know, uh, <clears throat> be involved with all kinds of people learn uh, new new ideas from your environment and gain new value because of it and actually invest in it because Venus is going to try and sign in the next day so invest in it as a strategic value for all of us right now so this is a good way to actually sow seeds that are going to get planted and would actually have a good good um, percentage of them might bloom in your life over time this is about variety also in our relationships it's not about commitment to one thing and it doesn't mean that we need to spread ourselves over too many subjects it means that we can find several subjects that you know concentrate around the central pillar which describes who we are different branches over the f of, of the same log you know, which is a description of who we are. And then on the fifth, we have this great conjunction between Jupiter and Pluto, and that's just a great transformation. You know, if we talk about the great benefic um, in ancient astrology, Jupiter bringing enlightenment, bringing the uh, expansion of horizons, but also enlargement and the quickening of transformation and the great law of the sky, you know, this is the time that it joins Pluto and, and aligns itself with Earth. Pluto had as the god of the underworld and volcanoes of transformation, death and rebirth. Then we have great transformation coming. This is more death, more rebirth. And definitely when it stands with Pallas Athena, squaring Aries. When it stands uh, uh, next to Pallas Athena in Capricorn, squaring Aries, this is going to change our economic systems, change our governance systems, change our people in power, change the way we think about the system, about the structure of things, and definitely going to rock the pillars of our society and the job market. And, and we can see how things might be even more extreme than they are now and are going to drive people to actually move forward as we head on to next week with the super pink moon in Libra on the 7th same day Mars in Aquarius would be squaring Uranus and Taurus and we'll be talking more about it next week but as I said this is a rebellious time this is a time for personal and collective revolutions and by the second part of April a lot of this energy would feel much lighter 
So hang in there. Hang in there. Um, I'm opening up in a course, half price. So if you want to um, be a part of an online group with me in these Corona times, and it's spread over uh, uh, three installments, so it's not a lot of money. It's <coughs> um, about $350 per course. And um, I'm sorry, four, 450 so it's 150 for each installment. And it's half price than what I usually charge. And even if you can't afford that and you do want to study, talk to me. This is a time that we need to hold each other's hands. If you're feeling stressed, if you're feeling anxiety, if you're feeling be bewildered, even if you don't have the money right now and you need someone to strengthen you, you can reach out. That's what we do as a community right now. Put money aside. But if you can, of course, I would love to be supported as I'm still renting this apartment and my landlords don't really give a fuck. <laughs> um, I hope they, I, I know they do. I know they do, but they are as afraid as I am for their income, for their daughter's income, actually, because she pays her rent from this, from this rent. But we are all in this together and we need to hold each other's hands. So I'm asking you to move it forward, this energy. Here I am offering you free consultations and, and almost free tuition, you know, and move it forward, pass it on, you know. And of course, you're welcome to use it. All the details are at the end of the slide. And thank you for passing these videos on, for sharing them, for commenting on them and liking them. And may we all be healthy, live long, and prosper. This is Nia Boaz-Filer signing out. Bye-bye.